Hello. So, the core of any emulator is to be able to interpret the instructions that it's given. Now, in a previous video, we looked at uh, the, the instruction set. Well, we looked at the instructions, uh, how they're represented in memory, and we looked at sort of the difference between instructions and data, and found that there aren't actually any major differences, certainly within the 6502 architecture. Um, so, the implication of that last video is that um, an instruction is basically just an 8-bit byte and this table here this is a great resource by the way this this table here outlines um, those bytes and what they do so we kind of had a, a little bit of a look at some of the um, some of that earlier on um, but I, I, I quite like this uh, this is a resource um, if you if you take this table as being uh, 256 bytes long so zero zero through down here to 255 then you can easily represent that uh, in an array so what I did and what I decided to do was create an array uh, of 64k so 65536 bytes which is 0 through 65535 and this here is obviously the reference within the address and uh, on the right hand side here this is the contents um, I'll come on to why I've filled in this in a second so the each of these instructions the ones that are filled in these are what's called legal instructions and the ones that aren't filled in are what's called illegal instructions and the illegal instructions were never part of the original 6502 design is basically what they are but in some circumstances those illegal instructions will actually do something so if you supply the opcode to the microprocessor so for example in this particular instance 04 so there's, there's your 0 there's your 4 it may or may not do something um, and some people spend an awful lot of time working that out but for this emulator what all I'm interested in are what they call the, the legal instructions the ones that have um, a legal interpretation and are documented by um, MOS uh, as being part of the 6502 design so when I um, when I when I put this together I basically said right okay we're gonna have an array so that's going to represent our memory um, inside that array what I did was I filled this area here which officially is, is the, the area where the stack will go page page one as you can see there um, and I put in each and every uh, opcode so that would run down to one FF which would carry the, the, the contents FF so that obviously uh, translates to opcode zero which in this table here is break then you got ORA then you've got illegal 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 then you got ORA on zero page um, arithmetic shift left on zero page illegal and so on and so on and so on so the next question I ask myself is well how do I get those instructions to actually be interpreted by the computer by my computer by my PC by the emulator to do something well worthwhile and useful in C there's a very useful set of constructs called pointers now those pointers are basically uh, pointers to memory I will put a video together on that um, which may sort of help in uh, maybe the next video um, but in reality you can use those pointers for several things and in this case what I've done is I've created an array of pointers to functions right. now then C is very the, the idea of the constructs behind you know within C actually is not that difficult you know an array or a pointer or a pointer to a pointer you know indirect referencing it's actually very very easy uh, to understand when you sort of draw it out on paper the hard part within C is it's actually writing it down because the syntax is horrible but what that basically says there look is you've got an array because that's how you would you, you know if we go to the top here you can see that memory is set up as an array and it's an array of size RAM and RAM has a size of 65536 so that's just an array it's an unsigned character array but 
what does this what does this star do here well that says I'm an array of pointers so basically that array there has every element has a pointer in it points to what well this bit here right if we take the u char out we can take the u if you ignore the u char for the minute and we'll we'll, we'll write this out in, uh, we'll write this out properly oh yeah started writing something else out but it doesn't matter so if we if we write this out again here and we say int now what it says is i'm an i'm a oops int and i'm a pointer um i'm a function pointer so we'll just call it function i'm a function pointer to an array and there's my function all right and then you can say equals so why the u char and what does the int do well the u char says the function expects you to send an unsigned character into it and the int says i'm going to return you an integer value on and on exiting the function and if you look here um within this here each of these pre-declarations in c tells you exactly that so these forward look up these forward references so that says i'm going to return you an int that's the name of the function and that's what you can send into the function as an so it's an unsigned character now <coughs> the array is 250 six elements long so it starts here and ends down here okay now as you can see the second to last one is and i've called it an i underscore that just basically tells me it's an instruction that i'm referencing so i underscore ink so ink if if if, if we got it right oops is here and it is it's ink absolute that obviously is an undefined so ink absolute as a as an actual decimal reference of 254 and it has a hexadecimal reference of fe so you know, again you get the f from the row and the e from the column so the e's up here and the f's on the on the row um where are we there we go so this here is the is the array that i created to point to the functions all right so they they point to the forward lookup functions all these things here down this left hand side but what i did was in here this is where the actual functions are created and this is genie so genie allows you to sort of dive straight to one of the functions so this is the compare x function and it takes the exact same format the int the function name so the int is what it's returning the function name and the unsigned character and in this case we're passing it in the character of c and what that character of c actually carries we'll, sh we'll see in it we'll see in a minute but it's interpreted through this switch statement so when it gets um when c equals e0 it prints this when c equals e4 it prints that and so on and then there's the default basically saying i don't understand what you passed me and i'm going to return you an int of zero because that's a success criteria i mean we could on the default here get it to return an int of one saying you know, it's a load of rubbish whatever you sent me is a load of rubbish but it, it, it doesn't really matter for this particular program because this particular program is very simple and all it does is it, it says look i'm going to set up so i'm going to set up some memory so i, I created a routine called sys reset and the function on sys reset does does this basically it just says look um, you can ignore the file pointers so I was playing about a little bit. You can ignore all of this, well, most of this. But the thing that's important is the for loop here. And what the for loop basically does is it goes through 256 to 512, um, which is there, 256, so that's 100, uh, 0100 hex, and to 512, which is 01FF hex, so it goes down there. And then what it does is it says for each time I hit one of those memory locations, so in memory location 256, I want to put in two. I want to put in whatever the memory location is minus 256. So in this particular case, it's um, it's 256 minus 256, and it puts a zero in there. The next time it goes around the loop, it'll put a one in there because it'll be 257 minus 256, and 258 minus 256, 259. 
260, 261, minus 256, and so on. Um, and the reason why you have to put the minus in is because I'm actually working in page one um, rather than page zero. And I did that just to basically uh, see the difference, you know, make sure that it, you know, it was for my own purposes because I could then see the difference in the output. Um, once it's done that, it comes back into the main loop after it's run the reset function and it goes through this for loop, which goes through that same memory area again. But this time what it does is it prints out the um, the number so basically 256 but it'll print it out uh, yeah it prints out in decimal so it prints out 256 then it'll print a tab then it'll print a hexadecimal value and it prints a hexadecimal value of whatever the whatever is in the memory so as we looked here so the first time it goes around it'll print out the hexadecimal value or well, the hexadecimal value of zero is the same as the decimal value of zero funnily enough um and once it's got around 256 it'll drop out it'll go to the cleanup routine and then it'll exit the program um, but what does this bit do? Well, this is the bit that we talked about before. This is the call to the function. Now, the result is that bit that we were saying. It's going to return an int. This is how you call the function. So you're basically saying that, sorry, this stuff in the brackets here, okay, is the element that I'm calling. Well, the element that I'm calling is j minus 256, because if you remember, we've only got 256 elements in our pointer array. So the only thing we can we can call is zero through to two five five. So we have to do that. Um, then what we do is we do exactly the same again. But if you think about it, it's because the function expects an unsigned char to go into it. Okay. So when we when we had a look at um, so when we ran that that routine there. Oops. What was j equal to? So if we have a look at um, at main, and j is an int, so it doesn't make any difference. Ints will pass down to unsigned chars. And so we're sending an unsigned ch char into that routine. So result equals, so the, so the return result will call that function with that value. So that, that function reference there with that value and the function itself will do something and all it'll do is it'll take that character which is exactly the same um, number and it will look it up and say okay this is a zero page in this case or it's an absolute so how does it look actually um, on, 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 on paper when you okay so when you run it it looks like this or it would do if I actually clicked into the, the right area and that is exactly what you would expect it to do. It runs down to less than 512 because that's what the routine says. We runs to from there to 511. That's the thing it's printing, and this is um, this is the output. So it prints three decimal points um, if it doesn't if it's an illegal, um, and we can we can see that on here. So somewhere down here we'll have a an undefined which is down there and undefined says take it in and it doesn't matter what you take in just print three dots followed by the end of the new line character because it's an illegal um, and therefore um, we're not going to interpret it um, and you can see scrolling back up through the list there are a lot of uh, a lot of those illegal instructions um, there are also a lot of the legal ones as well so as you can see there D1 okay is a compare with a y indirect well we can check that so if we say d a b c d one uh, is there is a compare with an indirect y so let's go back and have another look so compare is an indirect as a y indirect it's absolutely correct um so what that's done is if we go down this entire list we can say that our interpretation um, of the opcodes is spot on um, so our program is set up now to have uh, a routine for each and every uh, opcode it will ever uh, encounter and now we have to make a decision as to what we're going to do with it um, and that is, was basically the very next step that I looked at.